The fourth generation Nissan Pathfinder is nothing more than a crossover with the monocoque body, independent all wheel suspensions, and a simplified all wheel drive transmission with two WD, auto, or four WD modes. The torque from the 3.5 liter V6, 260 horsepower, is transmitted to the drive wheels by an Xtronic stepless variator. In addition, there is a version with front wheel drive only. But the Pathfinder 3, which will be discussed below, has a powerful spar frame integrated into the body. The suspension of all wheels is also independent. But this is a real, one might say, uncompromising SUV. Under normal driving conditions, the torque is transmitted to the rear wheels, 2H mode, and in auto mode, the front wheels are connected by an inner axle clutch. In positions 4H and 4 low, the connection between the front and rear axles is rigid. 4 low mode implies a downshift in the transmission. Inner wheel locks are replaced by electronics that slow down the slipping wheels. The owners of Pathfinders are in no hurry to part with them, because there are fewer and fewer real SUVs. The car's arsenal includes a 2.5-liter turbo diesel 4, 174 horsepower, and a 4-liter V6 petrol, 269 horsepower. A 6-speed manual or a 5-speed automatic transmission is combined with the base engine. For the gasoline version, only an automatic is provided. We are dominated by dealer cars, but there are also those brought from abroad. Pathfinder is designed for 5 or 7 passengers, who are placed in 2 or 3 rows of seats. The salon is spacious and comfortable. Ergonomics are not bad, although the steering wheel is adjustable only in height, and the manual transmission lever does not shine with the clarity of work in short strokes. But the transformation of the cabin deserves praise. Both rear rows and even the back of the front passenger seat fold down, and the rear window opens separately from the tailgate. The equipment of dealer cars will also please. The initial version, with a 2.5-liter engine, had six airbags, a stabilization system, dual-zone climate control, heated mirrors and front seats, power accessories and a CD radio. The average equipment was additionally equipped with a third row of seats, a CD changer, cruise control, rain and light sensors. The top one had additional air conditioning for rear passengers, a leather interior, a sunroof, electric front seats, by Xenon headlights and cruise control. Nissan Pathfinder can be considered quite reliable. Two of his generations have already been ill with many childhood diseases. Many, but not all. The 174 horsepower turbo diesel is not only the most common engine in the range, but also the most trouble free. If you refuel with high quality fuel, there will be no breakdowns. True, over time, by 80,000 kilometers, injection nozzles usually begin to tap. As a rule, flushing helps, but if the knock does not disappear, the nozzles have to be changed. It is better to contact the officials or a specialized service equipped with modern equipment, since the nozzles have an identification number and, after installation, must be registered in the onboard computer. The Petrol 6 is also, in general, reliable, but suffers from one ailment, however, very unpleasant. It is demanding on the quality of fuel, and so much so that due to the wrong gasoline it can even die. The fact is that the surrogate, more precisely, its unburned part, settles in the catalyst and, accumulating there, ignites. After combustion, the remaining ceramic dust is sucked back into the cylinders and destroys the engine. There is a process comparable to when sandpaper is passed over the mirror of the cylinders. Problems with the V6 even forced the Japanese to refuse to supply gasoline versions of the Nissan Pathfinder to some countries. There are no complaints about the operation of a manual gearbox, which cannot be said about the machine. The box cooling circuit is built into the engine radiator and may depressurize over time. Antifreeze that gets into the transmission will sooner or later disable the machine. In the all-mode 4WD all-wheel drive transmission, after 3 to 4 years of operation, the drive shaft cross wears out. The rear gearbox can also fail, and racing on asphalt in 4H mode destroys the transfer case. There are no surprises in the fully independent suspension. Unless the ball bearings are changed as an assembly with a lever and the racers can withstand no more than 40,000 km. Shock absorbers and wheel bearings of the rear wheels fail by 100,000 km. The latter are replaced as an assembly with the hub and ABS sensors. The paintwork is not durable, and the chrome parts began to bloom even on fresh copies. The windshield washer nozzles are poorly located, they freeze in the cold. Due to the poor thermal insulation of the roof, condensation forms. The turbo diesel is reputed to be reliable. The guarantor of its longevity is not only the timing chain drive, but also high quality fuel with an appropriate level of service. To extend the life of the motor, change the air filter more often. The petrol V6 is even more discerning in terms of gasoline quality. 
The surrogate destroys the catalysts and the engine itself. Traces of antifreeze, urgently contact the service. Do not neglect extraneous sounds from the bowels of the transmission. The rear gearbox often fails, which, before breaking down, gives itself out with a rattle and clang when starting off or braking. In the front suspension with transverse levers, the weak point is the ball joint, which comes complete with the lever. She rarely nurses more than 50,000 kilometers. The steering rack also does not differ in durability, so the appearance of knocks in it should alert. The rear suspension has a design that is rare for a car of this class, it is an independent double wishbone. And also hassle-free. Electric mirror drives often fail in electrical equipment, a radio tape recorder with a CD changer and an air conditioner are problematic, and the rain sensor does not work correctly.